this. And then the cut, and then that'll be me. Will it? Do it again. <laughs> it's like gonna be like TikTok, mate. Right? We've been watching like. I don't, I can't be natural. <laughs> What's the show about? Um, it's just jokes, Will. It's just jokes about becoming a mum. In a pandemic, but I don't like saying that because that sounds boring, doesn't it? Oh, that'll be in a month. Oh. But I had a lockdown kid. Now I wasn't planning on having children. Now don't get me wrong, she is the best thing that has ever happened to me, and I'm aware I'm very, very lucky. But I wasn't planning on having kids, so it was a little bit of a shock. And uh, I remember looking at the pregnancy test when I found out, couldn't fucking believe it. Uh, mainly because I bought them from Home Bargains. I'm like, this can't be. <laughs> Two pregnancy tests and a foot peel for two quid. Get a clear blue. And I was freaking out. And uh, my partner, he was really sweet because he's, he's not, right, he's lovely. He makes me laugh every day, but he's not the most sensitive of men, okay? He'll say things like, you're beautiful in my eyes. <laughs> what are you tagging onto that sentence that doesn't need to be there? <laughs> you're beautiful in my eyes. May as well say terms and conditions apply, hadn't he? <laughs> Started saying to him now, your cock looks big in my hand. It's not, he's not the most sensitive is what I'm saying. <laughs> the other day I said to him, what do you love about me? He went, you've got a good set of strong legs on you. I'm like, thought he was going to ask me to play in goal for his five-a-side team. So, but when I found out I was pregnant, I was freaking out to do this job. I'm at my age and stuff and I'm always away and I was panicking. I was worrying. I was like, what are we going to do? And he just sat next to me, put his arm around me and he went, listen, we weren't planning on having children. So this baby, they must be a gift from God. I know. And I remember thinking at the time, oh, I hope he still thinks we're a gift from God when the born and look fuck all like him. Uh, <laughs> it's God's baby, that. No, that's God's nose. Don't know what you're on about. Uh, she's great, but I, I've got a very low pain threshold, right? I have to take two paracetamol to watch 24 hours in A&E, do you know what I mean? I like, I'm a bit, bit worried about it, a little bit scared about it. Because people don't help, because people put a lot of pressure on you. They're like, oh, you're going to be having a natural birth. No. I'm going to be taking all of the drugs. <laughs> and if you're pregnant and you haven't had a child, or you're thinking of having a child, just to let you know, um, you can only take the drugs the hospital gives you. Um, <laughs> I really regret buying those E's from the night porter, to be honest with you. <laughs> Waste of money. But uh, I, uh, I was a bit scared, right, is what I'm saying. And two of my best mates came round. They both got two kids each, right? And they came round when I found out, I told them the news, and both sat down, we're having a cup of tea. And about one minute into the conversation, my mate goes, have you thought about the fact you might have to have an episotomy? And uh, now, I didn't know what it was at the time. <laughs> and if you don't know what it is, I'm going to explain it to you now. It's pretty gruesome, so I apologise for that. Basically, uh, when a woman is having a natural birth and they think that the head may tear the vagina on the way out, they do a cut uh, from the top of the vagina down to the anus. That's not actual size, by the way. It's me. <laughs> Fucking massive. Just crawls out. <laughs> um, I'm just showing you that to demonstrate. Because if it was mine, it'd be fucking tiny, just... <laughs> More like that. Anyway, they do a, a cut from the vagina to the anus, right? And then uh, they get the baby out, and then they stitch that back up again. That's called an episotomy, right? It means there's less complications later on instead of the woman tearing. This is what my mate is saying to me, 12, 12 weeks pregnant. Have you thought about the fact you might have to have an episotomy? No, but now I will. Every night when I shut my eyes, I'll see a fucking Stanley knife going into my vagina. <laughs> And then she followed it up with, don't worry, there's a cream you can get. <laughs> I was like, well, what do I do? What do I do with the cream, right? Do I rub it into my eyes so I don't have to look at my vagina ever again? <laughs> she went, no, don't be so ridiculous. What you do is you rub it on the area leading up to the pregnancy and it makes the skin more elastic, less chance it will tear. Right, and my other mate, she's from the northeast, got two kids. She was drinking a cup of tea and she went, nah. I used that first time around, it's completely useless. It was like holding a pillow up to stop a train from coming. Which... 
didn't really help. To be honest with you. I, uh, I'm a geriatric mum. That was lovely to learn. Uh, it's what the midwife said to me. She said, what we used to call a geriatric mum. We're not meant to use it anymore. Well, if you're not meant to use it, stop fucking using it. <laughs> not meant to use your real name. I'm a <laughs> but I am. Uh, Cut that. Uh, <laughs> you're what we call a geriatric mum. Anyone over the age of 35 has a baby uh, is classed as a geriatric mum. That was, that was lovely to learn that I'd have to buy pampers for the fucking pair of us. Um, <laughs> any other geriatric mums in? Raise your fail hand. Yeah. <laughs> How old were you when you had yours? Oh, she's that old. She's can't. <laughs> What was that, love? We'll have to turn up the hearing aid. 36. Yeah, proper geriatric, aren't we? <laughs> what was that? Uh, 36. Yeah, it's a, it, it, honestly, I half expected when I went in to give birth to replace me hip at the same time. You know, <laughs> get all those little pesky jobs done at the same time. Because I, 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 do you know what drives me mad about it, right? Is the sexism of it. Because, yes, men can have children medically later on than women, but they should still be called geriatric dads, shouldn't they? Yes, exactly. Mick Jagger, right, is walking around. Do you know what he looks like? He looks like a skeleton who's, like, just walked through a spider's web, right? He's, just... <laughs> He's walking around like that, like, popping kids out left, right and centre, right? And they never, never once in the Daily Mail do you see him referred to as a geriatric dad. Like, he probably has to wring his dick out like a dry flannel to get sperm out of it. <laughs> Someone just wretch. <laughs> Drives me mad. I, uh, geriatric mum. I'm very close to my mum. My mum had me when she was 23. My mum's a single parent, and uh, I'm a single parent when it comes to claiming benefits. So, um, <laughs> yeah. very close to her, Pauline. Uh, she had me when she was 23. She already had a child under the age of three, right? That's a lot of responsibility. I couldn't imagine having that level of responsibility at that age. I'm very glad that I'm an older parent. And don't get me wrong, because like now I can Google stuff, right? I can go if there's something wrong with my baby, I just fucking Google it straight away. And there's reams and reams of pages that you can look and you can find out all the answers. When I was a baby, right? I was in the baby in the 80s. My mum couldn't Google stuff to find out. Like she had to go down the there and ask Zoltar what the problem was. <laughs> Can I say that again, Will? I fluff me line. I'm going to say it again. It's all right. What the fuck is that? Liam Gallagher? It's all right. No problem. What I'm saying was, uh, my mum had me when she was 23. And uh, I, I was very immature at that age. I, I lost my virginity when I was 19. I was a late starter. My first boyfriend asked me to do missionary and I fucked off to Africa. <laughs> Embarrassing, man. I used to be obsessed with Mark Owen from Take That, right? I was convinced that I was going to marry him, right? And uh, I remember in school one day, when they split up, a girl come up to me with a poster of Take That, and she just ripped it in two on the day they split up. And she went, what do you think about that? <laughs> and I, I was like, fine. And I went in the toilet and had a little cry, right? <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'm immature or anything, but I've held on to that. And uh, I seen that last year she got divorced on Facebook, so I'm going to go around with her wedding photos. <laughs> What do you think about that? <laughs> See how she likes it. My mum, I uh, got my mum, I'm very close to my mum because uh, she was a single parent. I bought, do you know what? I bought her the worst possible pet. I bought her the worst possible present you could get for a parent at Christmas last year. I bought her Alexa, right? Which, <laughs> honestly, it would have been less annoying to buy her an air horn. It's. <laughs> I went round, right, the other day, and she sat there, and we're watching the TV, and she's like, Alexa, how old is Claudia Winkleman? <laughs> Alexa, how old is Tess Daly? <laughs> Alexa, when did Bruce Forsyth die? <laughs> Can we just watch Strictly Come Dancing? <laughs> a fucking running commentary of it. Throughout the whole of it. That's all she does now is just, and I think because when you get a certain age, you start comparing yourself with other people who are the same age, right? Just to see whether Boots number seven is working for you or not, right? And uh, we, were watching, we were watching a film and she went, oh my God, she's aged, hasn't she? She's aged terribly. I was like, yeah, because the last film you've seen her in was It's a Wonderful Life. 
How is she still alive? She should be dead. <laughs> She's age. Alexa. <laughs> she rang me up the other day, right? I saw, she went, you've made it, you know. I was like, what? She went, you've made it. I asked Alexa who you was and she knew. <laughs> <laughs> you've made it. It means nothing, Pauline. Alexa know who's Kinga from Big Brother is. <laughs> like, no one should be remembering what the fuck she did. Um, Alexa, who is? <laughs> Do you know what was funny the other day? Because well, during the pandemic, I had to speak to her on FaceTime a lot. And if you've ever FaceTimed the pensioner, no face, but a lot of fucking time. And I'm speaking to her on FaceTime during the pandemic. My mum lives in Wales. I live in Liverpool now. And uh, we're talking to her on FaceTime because I couldn't see her during the pandemic. And obviously, I've just had a baby, right? That She's a, gran she's a grandmother. And uh, she wants to give me all this advice, all this, you know, um, knowledge that she's had as a parent. She wants to pass it on to me. And it, no, it's really lovely, but it came across as um, patronising, uh, is the word. Because we'd be talking on FaceTime, right? And I'd be like, Mum, I can just see your light bulb. Can you move it in a bit? And she'd be like, baby looks thirsty. Why don't you give the baby a little drink? The baby looks thirsty. I was like, all oh, right. I didn't realise, Mum. I just thought they were like cactuses. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I, know I'm, I don't think you can tell how hydrated someone is through fucking FaceTime. <laughs> But she was terrible. She'd do it every single call we do. She'd be like that. She'd find something to bring up. Uh, I remember one day she was like, baby looks cold. Pop a little cardigan on her. The baby looks cold. Baby looks cold. It's the hottest day of the year. It's so hot. Ten Downing Street are having a fucking garden party. <laughs> Like, it was really, like, baby looks cold. And do you know what annoys me, right? It comes from a good place. I get it. She couldn't be there. You know, she wanted to give me her knowledge. And it comes from a really good place. But at the same time, where was this level of concern, right? When I was a child in the 80s, when she put me in a shell suit <laughs> next to the fire, <laughs> watching paedophiles present Top of the Pops. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> write Jimmy a little letter. Go on, write Jimmy a letter. Write Jimmy a letter. Try to be mad. I, uh, just the other day, because I speak to her on FaceTime a lot, she's always FaceTiming me to speak to me and the baby. And uh, the other day, because obviously you're on loudspeaker on FaceTime, I'm talking to her, right? And uh, my baby's going through a stage of dancing to the Venga boys. Don't ask, we're very camp in our house, right? It's dead, it's dead, dead cute, though. No, they're, 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 they're cute. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't have to show her the moves to it, but... Uh, so I'm on FaceTime talking to my mum about, hey, mum, watch this. Uh, Alexa, play the Venga Boys, right? So my, my Alexa goes off, starts playing the Venga Boys, is coming. And Pauline's Alexa goes off. <laughs> starts playing the same song, right? It's quite funny. She's just like, Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa. Because she's so faint, it never picks her up. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Right. And it was, it was really funny, right, funny, forgot about it. The next day, she rings me up, absolutely raging. She's like, it's not funny, that. That cost me three pounds, that. Because my mum isn't linked up to Spotify. <laughs> She's not like, Link. three quid, right? And she was kicking. She's going, I'm going to need that money back. You'll have to transfer it. Like, three quid? <laughs> For five quid, you could have owned the Venga Boys, mum. <laughs> I just love the idea of the Venga Boys sat at home going, oh my God, two people have bought the single! We can reform! <laughs> uh, the first place we went uh, when lockdown loosened, uh, obviously the baby was about six months old and that was the first time we could go anywhere that wasn't the park, right? So the first place we went was to the uh, SeaWorld Centre in uh, the Trafford Centre. Has anyone been? I don't think it's called SeaWorld. What's it called? The Sea Life Centre in the Trafford Centre, that's the one. And uh, if you haven't been, dad, good value for money if you like spending 30 quid to watch a starfish mouth the words, help me. Uh, <laughs> so we went in, right, and they do this really American thing now. If, you, if you've been recently, you'll know they do this, right? <laughs> Before you go in, they make you pose on a green screen. So it's me, my boyfriend, and my daughter in the middle. And they go, just pose on that screen, give us a smile, and just pretend you've just seen a shark. Right, well, that, that's not a natural reaction, is it? 
I'm going to see a shark and be like, hey, who's this guy? So I just went, ah, oh, my baby! <laughs> Didn't go down well. It's so awkward though. Do you know what? We're British, we're miserable. Just let us fucking go through. Right, we're just like this, hey. Right, they take our picture. And then halfway around, they flog at you. But what they do, they don't do it in a subtle way, So because they'll usually be like, get to a fuck, right? But what they do is they put your picture of the baby and they face it outwards. And they go, do you want to buy this picture of your kid? And what they've done is they've badly photoshopped us underwater. And it's me, my partner, my daughter, underwater with a shark above our heads, right? In fact, obviously on green screen. They went, do you want to buy that? And my me, me daughter's face is like looking at everyone. I'm like, oh, yeah. Because I can hardly go, delete that, can I? <laughs> social services behind me, delete that. Um, so I bought it, right? And when I bought it, the fellow who was selling it us went, and for £2 extra, if you pay that extra, we'll send you an email and you can send that picture on to your friends and family. <laughs> and my boyfriend went, don't send that to your mum. <laughs> She'll be like, why hasn't she got a snorkel on? <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> I didn't think maybe this is shy. She's terrible with the technology. I don't think she'd even find the email. She, honestly, I don't know what age it is that you get, right? I think I'm getting this age now, and I'm genuinely terrified, where you don't get a pair of glasses from an optician's anymore. You just pick a pair up from the Asda. <laughs> pick us a pair of readers up when you go to the Asda. It, it, like, it's a medical condition. You wouldn't get a pacemaker from cash converters, would you? Pick us a pair of readers up from Poundland, minus two or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I can get in a hearing aid from the Lidl, would you? <laughs> There's 100 pairs of glasses in Pauline's house, not one of them the right prescription for her face, right? She said the other day, she's like, they should do an old person's Love Island. No, they shouldn't. <laughs> Take your half an hour to find the right glasses to read it with. She's got a text. Um, <laughs> well, she said, my mate said to me the other day, right, that his dad bought a pair of glasses from the petrol station. <laughs> yeah, £30 on pump four and a pair of bifocals, please. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, mate, you're talking to the coffee machine. Can you just um, turn around? <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, she's at that age, right, and there's, a, there's a, a story that highlights this, right, how bad she is with technology. So there was a, a, a thing that went viral during lockdown. You've probably seen it. It was of an elderly man in a care home. And he used to sleep with a framed picture of his wife who'd passed away under his pillow. And the video that went viral was this man, the care home staff had got him a present and he's opening the present and they'd got him a cushion with his wife's face on, printed on, so he could sleep with that instead. Has anyone seen this? It's lovely. If you haven't seen it, it will 100% make you cry. It's a really beautiful, beautiful video. And his reaction, he wells up, he's crying, everyone's crying. And my mum's seen that video, right? And she went, I'm going to get your granddad one of those cushions of your nan. Which is weird, really, because my nan's still alive, so... <laughs> Weird. She isn't, she's dead, but it was a funny joke, wasn't it? It's a funny joke. Like, funny joke. <laughs> but, yeah, my, dad, my nan's been dead about 13 years now, and my, my granddad, like, just, he's obsessed with her. He talks about her all the time. They were together from the age of 14 until she passed away in her 70s, right? And I thought, what a lovely thing of my mum to think of doing for him. I thought, yeah, he'd love that. And I, what I should have said is, I'll order that for your mum, but I didn't think, right? I just had the baby, I wasn't thinking straight. So I let Pauline order it, right? The day comes, he's getting his cushion. I know he's got it because she said she's had an email off DHL saying it's arrived, right? I speak to my granddad at the same time every day. He's 86, he lives on his own, right? And I ring him up about five-ish every day when I can. And I rung him up and he's not mentioning anything. And I thought, that's weird, he's a pensioner who lives on his own. He's not mentioning this cushion, right? And I went, have you had any posts today, granddad? He went, oh God, yeah. Yeah, I have actually, yeah. I went, right. I said, what was it? He went, a cushion. I went, right. What was on the cushion? And he went, I think it's your nan's stomach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not. And um, what my mum had done, she hadn't resized <laughs> the photograph, right? 
So she just put it in. Right. And they've sent her a proof. It's gone to a junk mail. She doesn't think to check the junk mail. She's gone, bam, 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 paid, done. Not for anything off it. So my granddad, an 86-year-old pensioner, how harrowing is that, right? He gets a cardboard box, he opens it up, and it's just his widower's torso in the middle of the box. It's like the final scene in Seven. It's like they're holding a ransom and just sending a back part by part. If you don't send the money, Reggie, we'll send the fingers next. So funny. And I remember, I said to me, I thought, obviously, it's hilarious. And I'm a comedian. I'm going to say that on stage. And my mum was like, it's not funny. It's not funny. I paid a lot of money for that cushion. I was like, well, you're going to have to pay even more now, aren't you? Because you're going to have to get the head on another one. The arm on another one. The leg. It's going to like the build a fucking nan factory. <laughs> it's, it's still there as well, though. Right, obviously he's not. So my granddad, he's just got two red cushions and then my nan's midriff just... <laughs> this looks like Dennis Nielsen's living room. It's, uh... So like this... Oh, my vape! Not got stars in your hands. Let's not lose that. Oh, hang on. Put it in. Tonight, Matthew, I'm oh, going to be... Table four. Table four. More vape. Do you know one of the hardest parts about um, being a stand-up comedian, right? And there's loads, there's loads of driving, we're in the car a lot. I overthink, I've got really bad anxiety, which is a different show, more depressing. And I uh, <laughs> do a lot of thinking when I'm driving home. I wonder what happened to Macy Gray, she tried to say goodbye and she choked, she walked away and she stumbled. <laughs> pulling over, Googling it. Oh. Do too much thinking. But one of the hardest parts of me about being a comic is that initial walk on stage, right? Because you're never more self-conscious about your, the way you walk than when a room full of people are watching you walk. Like, have you know, I walk with a little bit of swag. I'm like, oh. like, do you know like when you like, try shoes on and then the shoe attendant just sits there and watches you and you're like, I don't know, I don't know, what, I don't know how I'm meant to walk normally. Or when you go to the bar and you've got a round and all your mates are watching you walk back, struggling, you're like, oh, fuck. Like you're on a tight rope. And I was, I, w I was thinking the other day, right, I overthink quite a lot, and I was thinking the other day, I wonder if this is what happened to Neil Armstrong. Right, bear with me on this. So, <laughs> right, first man to walk on the moon, he's getting ready to take a step, right? Buzz Aldrin's behind him, bigging him up, giving it all this, going, come on, Neil. <laughs> 53 million US people are watching you. <laughs> He's asthmatic, Vicky. <laughs> Take the first step, Neil. And like, Neil's panicked because all these people are going to watch him walk on the moon and he's just gone, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> nothing to do with gravity, that. So you just watch him, Buzz Aldrin walks out, like, what's he doing? Crack on with the show. I breastfed. Now, listen, the only reason I tell you I breastfed, by the way, I'm not one of these women that are like, oh, you must breastfeed. Breast is best. Couldn't give a shit. You do what you need to do for your mental health, right? The only reason I'm telling you I breastfed is just in case any of you are looking at my tits thinking they look shit. Um, they do, they're absolutely ruined. One of them looks like E.T.'s finger. It's awful. And do you know what annoys me? Like, I wasn't going to breastfeed, but then the old tip police came round the house. <laughs> Midwife. <laughs> she comes round the house, right? And uh, she's telling me all the reasons I uh, should be breastfeeding. They're not meant to pressure you now, so they just gaslight you instead. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. Up to you, unless you want the baby to have rickets. Up to you. <laughs> up to you. No judgment here. Right, and uh, she's telling me all the reasons about all the benefits of breastfeeding, right? I wasn't paying attention. I'd watched three episodes of Four in a Bed before she arrived, you know. Let's get into the one where you find out who the real twats are. Oh, you're not born in a tanner because you didn't get your perfect poached egg. Right. And then she goes, <laughs> she goes, right. This is, the, this is the bit where I changed my opinion about breastfeeding entirely. I wasn't going to do it. And then she said this. She went, and if you breastfeed, Hayley, you can burn up to 400 calories a day. Right, baby, wake up. 
get on there. We had a little baby lamb on the other tits. I was like, come on. Let's get mummy back in those jeans. Is that 400 calories? Did you know that 400 calories? And 400 calories. She went, that's the equivalent of four apples a day. Apples? I'm not the hungry caterpillar. <laughs> oh, can I have five plums on a Thursday? A leaf on a Sunday? Um, 400 calories. I was so happy, honestly. She was like, 400 calories. Because I hate these people that are like, oh, I can't believe she's still breastfeeding. The baby's got a full set of teeth. It's 400 <laughs> calories. A full set of teeth. I wouldn't give a shit if Rylan Clark was clamped onto me for that. Well, Janet Street Porter on the oven for 800. Yeah, honestly, if I was burning calories and I'd have Alan Carr just hangling off my clitoris, I'd just be like a piece of beef jerky by the end of it. I wouldn't give a shit. It's great. Just sat there watching Netflix, burning calories. I'm going to be saying to my daughter, come on, Baba Lachan. And she'll be like, Mom, I've got a driving test. <laughs> but Mummy wants a Domino's. Get on! <laughs> Hang on, wait for your dad to finish first. That's <laughs> uh, I did put on loads of weight, though, cause, just because I, I thought I was burning it, so I was just eating double. <laughs> What was going out was coming back straight back in. <laughs> and uh, I was eating loads. And because I've, I've lost a bit of weight, actually. Mike was talking about losing weight. I've lost a bit of weight recently. Because I'll tell you what happened. About four months, five, five months ago, I was walking around in Manchester. Now, I, uh, I had a C-section. Um, so it looks like um, I'm just wearing a low-hanging bum bag at all times. It's just, a, it's just a shelf of fat just there just underneath me belly button. So much so, right, that little shit in Manchester tried to mug me about five months back, and he's like, what the f... <laughs> it's attached, it's attached! <laughs> Trying to find a zip in me roll of flesh. Where's, where's the money? I thought, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do something about this. Um, so uh, I've been doing Slimming World, and uh, I've, I've, do you know what? Like, people slag it off. I've done it for about a month, and I've actually lost, like, three, four friends. Um, <sighs> you're unbearable on it, aren't you? How many sins are in semen? Uh, <laughs> it's actually sin-free. Yeah. Mm. Have as much of that shit as you like. I mean, you're laughing, but it tastes nicer than those fucking Iceland meals that you get from some. Yeah. This is a bit of moisture in it, a bit of salt. I'm trying to get fit. Tracy knows what she's eating tomorrow, don't you, Trace? <laughs> trying to, uh, trying to get fit. I mean, mate was like, you don't need to join. Fancy Jim Haley. Just go for a run, right? I went for a run. I got overtaken by an empty packet of Watsits. Uh, it's not. It's demoralising. So I've joined a gym now. I've joined the lowest priced gym I could find in Liverpool. I don't actually think it's a gym, to be honest with you. It's just me on a treadmill and a bloke working on his car next to me. I just... Uh, I this is, I've just got to hand him cash. That's not right, is it? <laughs> And I was talking to my mate uh, about it. I was like, what do, what do you listen to at the gym, right? Because I can't, I go in the daytime, so I can't get motivated to run when I'm watching Dickinson's Real Deal. <laughs> it's not going to inspire me on watching an old woman settling a family heirloom for a five pound to go Benidorm, right? So I, I said to my mate, I was like, what do you listen to at the gym? And she went, oh, I love a podcast, mate. I like listening to podcasts. Now, I listen to uh, oh, probably like one or two podcasts. Uh, the main one I listen to is, I'm not even going to say the name of it, and I'll tell you why now, because it's a true crime podcast, right? It's very horrific, lots of horrible, horrible things. They basically detail the cases. They list everything that's happened. They play police calls. It's, it's really, really brutal. <laughs> sounds right up my street. I, I love a comedy. <laughs> that sounds like a laugh. <laughs> It's horrible, right? I'll give you the name. I bet you'll watch it like it's Mrs. Brown's Boys, won't you? I, um, 
It's horrible, right? It's a horrible podcast, but I, I love listening to it. I'm fascinated by it, right? And uh, I won't tell anyone the name of it anymore because another comedian, we were doing a gig together. Her name's Amy, Amy Gladhill, right? Uh, she's a brilliant comic, and we were doing a gig together, and she had a long drive back to London, and she went, can you recommend any podcasts for me to listen to? And I went, oh, well, I, I only know this one. And I said, it's true crime. I'll be honest with you, it's, it's quite brutal. And she went, no, I love stuff like that. That's what she said. I love stuff like that. I love stuff like that. So I told her the name of it, right? And I get a text at 2 a.m. that morning. And it's a photo of her hunched over a steering wheel like this, right? And the, the, the text just said, Hayley, that podcast was so horrific that I had to pull over on the hard shoulder and have a cry, right? <laughs> and I was like, shit, I listened to that to send me to sleep. I'm not like... Oh. Just hearing that skull getting crashed in really drifting me off. The other day I was dead hungry listening to it. I thought, why do I fancy donuts? And it's because the person who, who died, there was like a left donut on the sides. And I'm like, brutal murder. And I'm like, oh, custard cream donut. Oh. I'm too desensitized. Oh, yeah. My mate was like, why don't you? The easiest way to lose weight is just cut bread out. You eat loads of bread, Haley. You need to cut bread out your life. I was like, I'll fucking cut you out my life, Claire. Bread. Bread. I genuinely think it'd be easier to give up heroin than Hovis. <laughs> Love bread, man. Love bread. And because uh, she was like, why don't you, for your dinner, instead of having a sandwich or a boots meal deal, just whip up an omelette with the contents of your fridge? Just like that. Just whip up an omelette with the contents of your fridge. I am meant to whip up an omelette with two cans of Stella and a urine sample. It's like. <laughs> Sprinkling some frazzles on top like Salt Bay. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Trying to get fit. It's very lonely being a new mum in a pandemic. I, uh, I was in the... F and don't get me wrong, I'm not moaning. I was very, very lucky to have my daughter. I'm very lucky to have the pandemic that I had. I know a lot of people had to terrible, terrible times. But I was living in Liverpool at the time. I couldn't see my mum. All my friends are in Manchester based mainly. Uh, so I didn't really know anyone. And I just had a baby. My partner was back in work. And I was feeling quite isolated. It was at the time we could only go for one walk a day. And uh, I was feeling quite lonely. And I spoke to my friend, and she was like, oh, this, why don't you download this app? There's an app called Peanut, right? And uh, Peanut is to meet mums in your area. You can have talks about your children. You can go for walks with them. And uh, so I downloaded this app to meet other mums near me. And uh, my boyfriend was already on there, which was weird, <laughs> isn't it? Like, I thought it was something else to meet mums in areas. Anyway, right, I, um, has anyone heard of Peanut? Has any women been on it? Did you have much success? No, no. I'll tell you what it is. It's like mum Tinder. It's exactly what it is. You download it, right? And you get a photo of a mum. No kids in the shot, usually. Just them. <laughs> and then they have a bio of about two lines. And if you like the look of this mum, you swipe up and you give her a little wave, right? And if she likes the look of you, she swipes up, she waves at your back. You get a match and then you can start chatting, right? If you don't like the look of a mum, you swipe down and put her in the bin, which is where your self-esteem is after <laughs> using peanut. Why is it based on looks? It's literally, I like the look of her. Why is it based on looks? I want to learn wet whites off him. I want to go for walks with them. I don't want to go down on them. I... <laughs> Not until it's healed. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> awful. I was getting, like... No matches. And to be fair, right, I didn't really help myself because um, in your bio, you could put like two lines about yourself, right? So I thought, oh, I'll write a funny bio. And then if the mum finds that funny, she'll find me funny. We'll get on great and our kids will get on great and we'll go and live happily ever after, right? It'd be wonderful. Um, but if you don't know me, right, and you read two sentences by me, it, it, it doesn't come across well. Because um, this was my genuine bio on Peanut. Looking for mums for discreet pram walks <laughs> and chats about Coronation Street. Must have own pram, child not essential. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I genuinely thought that. <laughs> uh, and I was getting annoyed, right? I was getting annoyed that no people were like liking me. And uh, I was speaking to a male friend of mine on the phone. He went, oh, you need to sort your head out, Ailey. You need to man up. Men get treated like this all the time on dating sites. Just man up. So I did. I manned up, messaged all the women, calling them all frigid bitches. 
sent them an unsolicited tip pick. Bunch of slags. Um, I just deleted the app. So that was no good for me. Didn't meet anyone through Peanut. And then uh, the baby groups opened. Six months in, the baby groups opened. So I was like, right, I am joining every single baby group going. And uh, I, I go to them all. Do you do the baby groups now? Which ones do you go to? Wow. wow. Nothing wow about that, is there? Wow, baby sensory. I tell you what baby sensory is, if you haven't been. There's no wow involved in it. <laughs> Basically, what you do uh, is you just drape a cloth up and down your baby's face <laughs> for 45 fucking minutes <laughs> while Enya plays on Spotify. <laughs> sail away, sail away, what is this doing? Baby's just blinking. Four quid. Wow. Eight quid. Fuck off, is it eight quid? They've seen you coming, love. Eight quid. Sometimes they'll get a paint roller out and just roll it up and down the baby. I'm like, I don't even know if they've got DBSs. Honestly, if I would have gone to baby groups before I had kids, I wouldn't have had kids. They're the best contraception ever, honestly. <laughs> do it up. Baby sensory on a Monday, I do that. Um, on Tuesday, I go to baby ballet, which is dead cute because they wear tutus. But do fuck all ballet. Um, <laughs> what she basically does uh, for about 40 minutes, my child, she looks like she's just finished a 12-hour shift in Asda. Right? <laughs> just hair coming out, just stains down her top hole in a tights, right? And she just runs up and down the length of the room with a plimsoll. Just stopping every now and again to have a shit. <laughs> While I have to stand on the ballet mat copying the teacher, right? And I can't plie because I'll piss myself. I'm just like... <laughs> Fiver. You're like, that sounds really reasonable. <laughs> Do you know what? I might stop being a stand-up comedian and charge you money for shit. 20 pound, baby spank. <laughs> that sounded horrible. Cut that. Baby swimming as well. I do baby swimming, which is extortionate. I go like one of the brand ones, right? And you basically pay like 20 quid a lesson just to drag your baby along the pool like it's a wet towel. Just like... <laughs> twinkle, twinkle. It's extortionate. And do you know what they had the nerve to do? They send you an email going, at the end of the term, would you like to pay £422 to have a picture of your child underwater? No. No. I've got me picture from SeaWorld, thank you. I'll stick that up. On. <laughs> Do you know they sent me a text the other day, right? Our lesson is at 5 p.m. And they sent a text message about 10 past 8 in the morning saying, today's lesson has been cancelled because someone has done a poo in the pool. <laughs> someone, not even a kid. <laughs> it's like a member of staff's had enough and gone, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Gonna go and get a job in toy box instead of this. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> also, how long does it take to get out? They had an eight-hour window to get it out. If you were a kid in the eighties, if you if you did it, you had to swim in and bring it back out again, and then you'd have to swim through the poo particles or whatever in the t in the sea. Let's see. Do you know what I said to my mum the other day? Because I was a bit, I was a kid in the eighties, and I went, "Did you have any baby groups in the eighties?" And she went, "Well, no. We just sort of took you to this woman and left you there." <laughs> and, I, and I went, "What woman?" She went, "Oh, I don't know. That's just how it was back then." <laughs> what woman? <laughs> it's outside a gingerbread house. Come in. <laughs> oh, okay. And then it goes soft play as well. We have to endure soft play. Uh, I'd right, I don't know if this is a Scouse thing. I'd never been soft play uh, before I had a kid. Obviously, it'd be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just me in the ball pit. Come in, kids. <laughs> but um, I'd never been there. So I don't know if this is a Scouse thing, but we went for the first time recently, right? And uh, they were playing, like, club classics. 
So all the kids are about two and three, and they just sat there in the ball pit, like hardly moving. And the music's like, baby, you're all that I want. When you're lying here, I'm lying. And I was like, what the? F-? And I went to my boyfriend, why are they playing like I be for club anthems? And he just went, because they know it's the only night out we'll have for the next 16 years. <laughs> just watch the baby while I go and do a line, kids. <laughs> Awful, man. I, uh, I'm all for gender-neutral toys. Think it's brilliant. Let kids play with whatever the fuck they want to play with as long as it's not a gun, right? Just let them do what they want to do. I used to love playing with He-Man, and it was quite like, oh, you can't be doing that. You're a tomboy. Like, I loved He-Man. Because uh, I've, got, I've got issues with Barbie, right? Do a lot of driving, do a lot of thinking, don't I? Come home the other night, and I was Googling at 2 a.m. <laughs> no, I don't want sex. I want to Google what Barbie's up to. And I was, I think he's left me actually. I haven't seen him in a while. Um, but I was, go- I Googled him. I've got issues with Barbie because the only jobs Barbie has had are these, right? She's had 250 jobs. She's 19. 250 jobs. 200, just cut this. 200. Hey, shall I tell you about Barbie? She's had 252 jobs. I'm going to read some of them out for you. So if you're parked in an NCP, you might want to extend your stay. <laughs> she has been, right? I've got issues because to me, if you are happy, then you're successful, right? I don't think you have to have necessarily the best job in the world. As long as you're happy, that's successful to me. Barbie has been, she's been a dentist. She's been an eye doctor. She's been a doctor. She's been a nurse. She's been a surgeon. She's been a paramedic. She's been a lifeguard. She's been a police officer. She's been a park ranger. She's been an artist. She's been a ballerina. She's been a designer. She's been lying on a CV, hasn't she? <laughs> You're going from a dentist to a ballerina. I hope she was ballerina after a dentist because you won't want her looking at your teeth. Are you all right, Barbie? Right, and I thought, do you know what? I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with this. Right, so I'm going to go on Dragon's Den for the next series, right? And I've created some normal, realistic Barbies. You ready for them? Yes. Here is my pitch. Here we go. (laughs) All right. I like it. I like that laugh, I just don't want to hear it at two in the morning. Um, so, here we go. Ready for this? I'm going to go on Dragon's Den, right, Dragons? Here's my realistic Barbies. <clears throat> HR Barbie, right? Yeah. And the, do you know, like, Barbies all come with a little something. So, like, they come with a handbag or they come with a car. So, all of my Barbies come with something as well. So, HR Barbie, she comes with a little switch at the back of her head. So, when someone comes in and complains the aircon's too cold, she can just roll her eyes like this. HR Barbie. A divorce Barbie. Yes! Let's teach them what's going to happen to the parents. Divorce Barbie. And she comes with emotional baggage. And then then I thought, geriatric Barbie, right? I'm a geriatric mum. Let's have a geriatric Barbie. And she doesn't come anymore, actually. She, uh, she's not been... Actually, I was thinking she could come with a bum bag full of flesh. <laughs> Just store Ken in there. <laughs> Very actually Barbie. I, uh, I was very lucky growing up. My nan uh, would just get me the things that she could have a working class family. My nan would get me He-Man and, you know, do you know, like, <laughs> maybe more, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents because my dad wasn't around and my mum was busy working, looking after us and uh, I was very, very close to my nan. And do you know, like, you want your family or your nan or your parents or whoever's your main caregiver, you want them to be supportive, right? But you don't want them to be too supportive that you'll end up making a twat out of yourself on the X Factor, do you? Oh, no, honestly, you can really sing... Go and show Simon how you can sing. Right, you don't want him to be that. And my nan was very close to being that supportive, right? I remember watching The Chase with her, right? And a question come on about Shakespeare. And she was like, oh, our Ailey will get this one right. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I was in Bugsy Malone when I was 12, nan. I played a splurge gun. I'm not going to know the back collection of The Tempest, am I? Our Ailey will get this one right. Like, that's like me saying, hey, Nan, you'll get this question right about 18th century textiles because you sit in a chair all day. You've got a nail. 
One thing that upsets me about my nan is she didn't like her picture being taken. A lot of us are guilty of this. I think the older they get, the more you hate your picture being taken. She'd literally go, get it out of my face, get it and go. She, the only time I ever seen her mad was when you took a picture of her, right? And I and I, I remember asking her, I must have been about 12, why don't you like your picture being took? And I never forgot it because she went, I don't like the way I look, now I'm getting older. And that makes me sad because when I look at a picture of my nan, I don't see it anything like I don't all I see is someone I love and someone I miss and it just brings back happy memories I don't see all these negative things that my nan used to see um so I, I let my daughter take pictures of me now like all the time like she she can't take any yet she's two so that's why I let her do it it's just of the ceiling but you know <laughs> very bad angles um <laughs> I'm all for people taking pictures because if we would have had more pictures of my nan we would have had better options for cushions to be honest with you it would have been <laughs> one that fitted in the frame very respectful of people who are older than me. I think there's a, we should really be respectful of people who are older. And it's not all of them, some of them are twats. But like, like, because I, I was Googling, because not all old people are just people who stand in Asda feeling up a loaf like it's a magic mic stripper. Just, <laughs> why are you putting your nails into a tomato with this COVID? <laughs> I, uh, I was doing a bit of Googling the other day, and you might have seen this because this went viral as well. Um, there was, <laughs> I was looking into how other cultures respect their elders. And I found this article about a small community in Indonesia. And as a mark of respect to their relatives who have passed away, what they do as a mark of respect is every three years, they dig up their bodies as a mark of respect. They dig up their bodies and then they dress them head to toe in modern clothing and have a picture took. <laughs> mark of respect. What's wrong with a plaque on a bench? Like, when did that... But also, I was thinking, someone had to have suggested that for them to roll with it. Right, they've been doing this years and years. Generally, has anyone seen the Facebook pictures of them standing with corpses all dressed up? Just me. <laughs> I've got very niche suggestions on my algorithm. <laughs> Need to stop listening to that podcast. <laughs> you may like this. People who dress up corpses. They genuinely do it. I'm not made this up. Every three years, they dig up their relatives and dress them in modern clothing. Someone's got to have suggested that for it to become... A, like, someone's gone, hey, what should we do today? And they've gone, tell you what, Dave. Just bear with me on this. Let's dig up Nana. Hang on. I haven't finished. Let's dig up Nana. Butter in a pair of Gucci sliders and a pretty little thing tracksuit. What are you saying? A little picky. I wouldn't mind it if my daughter did that to me when I passed away. It'd be the only time I could fit in something from ASOS. <laughs> Mum looks great. She's glowing. I, uh, I've got a friend who always sends me... Now I'm getting older. I've got a friend who always, always sends me articles about people who've become more successful later on in life. I don't ask for them. It's a bit patronising, really, isn't it? Just because I'm not on the TV doesn't mean I'm not successful. Just look at my bank account. That will show you I'm not. Um, <laughs> she sends me them all the time. The other day she sent me one. It was like, Morgan Freeman didn't become famous till he was 45. I just think, fucking hell, I've got five more years left. That's great. She sent me one the other day about a woman called Annie Edison Taylor, right? And what did she do that was so inspirational? <gasps> what did she do, Hayley? At the age of 65, yes, she went off the side of Niagara Falls in a barrel and survived. <laughs> it's not inspirational. That's a failed suicide attempt you've sent me. <laughs> my role model, my older role model is Cher. I fucking love Cher. Do we like Cher? Yes! If you haven't seen Cher, I went to watch her in concert. The, like, she's, how old is Cher? How, Alexa, how old is Cher? She was 76 years old. just added four years onto poor Cher there. Oh, the yard. 76. 76 years of age, Cher is. Love her. I went to watch her in concert about five years ago. She was singing. She was dancing. At one point, she was on the back of an animatronic elephant. Like, I'm 40 and I sleep with a JML leg pillow. I'm oh, my spine. My spine. She's amazing, right? And I went with my friend and her friend, who I don't really know very well, right? And I didn't really like her by the end of the concert. I'll tell you why. Because... I love Cher. Well, Cher comes on stage, right? And I went, oh, she looks amazing. And her friend, let's just call her 
bitch. No, her friend <laughs> just went, well, she should look amazing, shouldn't she? She's like an iPhone. Her face gets updated every six months. Oh. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about Cher is she's one of the few celebrities to admit that she's had loads of work done, right? She'll just say it, yeah, I want, I've got this, I've got that. She's quoted as saying, if I want tits on my back, I will get tits on my back. <laughs> I've got tits on my back, but that's breastfeeding, to be honest with you. It's really... That's what she's very honest, and I was like, yeah, but she admits it, she's had surgery. I said, but look at her, she's, like, she's in good shape. She's doing a two-hour concert, she looks amazing. And she went, yes, well, we could all look like that if we had all day to go to the gym. I was like, you do have all day to go to the gym. You're unemployed, you should look like Cher. <laughs> but this was the thing that really annoyed me about her, right? So Cher comes on stage in a skin tight, like black, to, for a bit, I could turn back time, skin tight black leather, right? And she comes on, she's like, <laughs> come on, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, thank you. I'm gutted stars in their eyes have finished. Aren't they? Hey, Colin, can we get a bit of smoke? Is that possible? He can run Sorry, Colin. <laughs> right, so she, she's, she's better live. She sounds better live. She can't move her mouth because of all the Botox. <laughs> She come on stage, right, and someone had flew at uh, fruit. Someone had flew. Someone had flew a sailor's hat onto the stage, right? And she just walks on, noop, noop, kicks it off the stage, and carries on singing, right? Um, <laughs> this girl went, oh, "That's so disrespectful." Someone's paid good money for that. She could at least picked it up and worn it for a few seconds. Like she's seventy-six. If she bends down. She'll need a warden to get her back up again. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Cher, are you okay? Um, but like, but also, that's not how it works, right? If you throw someone on the stage, they don't have to wear it. There's a reason Tom Jones doesn't finish his concerts wearing 800 <laughs> pairs of knickers. <laughs> oh, I best put these on, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> you don't wanna? I don't think we'll ever get round to sex bomb at this rate. It's fucking loads of that. Tom Jones burping in Welsh. <laughs> I, I don't, I've never understood people who throw knickers. At, they, they still do it, apparently, in their 80s. Like, I don't know what they think was going to happen. Like, Tom Jones going to go, this is the one for me! Let's go door to door till we find her. Just finishing a concert looking like Joey Tribbiani in Friends. <laughs> I think, I'm not, by the way, I'm not just saying ageism happens to old people. Ageism happens at any age. Young people get it like they're not experienced enough. Uh, they get told like they, you know, they can't get the position because they haven't had a life experience. I remember when I turned 30, I was working in an office, quite a serious job, and I was at the photocopier, and it'd been my 30th birthday, like maybe two weeks before, so some of the women from the office came. And all that happened was the photocopier never worked, and out loud I went, oh, fuck off, to the photocopier, right? And I didn't realise it was one of the women from the office behind me, right? <laughs> and she went, hey, Lee, that is not the way a 30-year-old woman should behave. <laughs> yes. And I went, Susan, a 56-year-old woman shouldn't be getting fingered at the Christmas party by Smelly Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. I didn't, I just told her, tell HR the photocopy is broke. See you later. <laughs> I love getting older, genuinely do. I do like getting older. I think there's loads of benefits to getting older. Don't get me wrong, there's loads of shit things as well. Ailments. The other day I thought I had arthritis. Well, the other day. This is during peak lockdown when you couldn't go in and see the doctors. You had to speak to them on the phone. I was convinced I was getting arthritis. I couldn't move uh, my left hand. My partner wasn't worried because I'm right-handed. He was like, just use your right hand. <laughs> it's a wanking joke. <laughs> so, but it was bad it was like absolute agony and I thought I'm going to have to speak to the doctor 
So I rung the doctor up and uh, <laughs> I told her, I said, I'm really sorry, I know we shouldn't Google it because you know we shouldn't do that, but I think it's off, right? I can't move my hand, it's agony, it's been an agony weeks, I've been on painkillers, I've got a brace for my arm. And she just went, sorry, can I stop you? You had a child recently, didn't you? And I went, yeah. She goes, yeah. What you've got there is a condition we call mum's thumb. It's actually called Quervain's tendonitis, which means it's repetitive strain syndrome for picking up your child, uh, but we call it mum's thumb. Can, can you not? <laughs> Can you just call it Quervain's tendonitis? Like, my boyfriend wouldn't go in the doctors and be like, do you know what, me balls are killing me. And she goes, yeah, what you've got there is dad's nads. Um, <laughs> mum's thumb. I'll tell you what else is crap about getting older. This is the only things I don't like. Because genuinely, I think now, I like being older. Genuinely, I don't, like, once a room full of people have seen you funny, you don't care anymore. I'm not even talking about childbirth. It's the ending of the show, so just... <laughs> Shut in. reason that is filming widescreen. Um, <laughs> I, uh, nights out with me mates, I don't like now. I go out with me mates, we were all in our 40s, right? When we used to go out and we... Because all they want to do now is go on spa breaks. Oh, let's go on a spa break. It, it, if I wanted to sit in my dressing gown for two days, I'd just stop taking my sertraline. The other day, we had to go into this five star resort in about two weeks, right? We made Kathy, I'm going to tell you about her in a minute, but made Kathy was like, I've looked on the website, it says you've got to pay £7.50 to hire a robe, they can fuck off and bring in me own. I was like, it's a five star resort. They're not going to have you walking around in a unicorn onesie from BM. <laughs> Strolling in with the five star people where I'm there, me Bon Marche dressing gown I've had 20 years. Boring now. Because I go out, when you used to go out with your mates, anyone in the 20s in? A yeah. few, oh, like, little wave there. I don't want to rub it in for a... <laughs> when I used to go out when I was in my 20s, it was loads of fun because we'd do drinking games and it'd just be like, down it, down it, down it. And I'd go out with my mates now. We're all in our 40s. We're paid £5.25 for a small glass of wine. And we're just like, sip it, sip it, <laughs> sip I could have got a bottle from the Lidl for this price. It's ridiculous. And we play Never Have I Ever, but you do still play drinking games? Yeah, Never Have I Ever. I used to love Never Have I Ever. I'd find out which of my mates had a threesome and it'd be boss, right? And I go out now with the same group of girls I've been hanging around with for 20 years. We play Never Have I We still play Never Have I Ever. There's nothing to learn. <laughs> Genuinely, about last month we had a little reunion and one of my mates did this. Never Have I Ever put my recycling in the wrong bin. <laughs> All. Don't like the last night out I had, right? Um, I went out with me with Kathy <laughs> in a Bon Marche dressing gown. I went out with my best mate Kathy. So this is about I was pregnant, so I couldn't drink, right? And uh, we were going on a night out. She's got two kids, so when she goes out, she goes full on feral. <laughs> let's do shots of the cat's back. Let's let's rein it in a bit. <laughs> Tipping point isn't on yet, and both your tits are hanging out your dress. Can you? Come on, let's get a cab into town. Petty Falula just hanging off her arse cheek. And Play Doh all matted on the side of her head. Come on! Um, we go into town, and me and her were very, very similar drunks in the way that we talk to anyone once we've had a drink. We talk, honestly, I remember once, this is about four, well, probably about five years ago now, I remember going on a night out with her and I woke up the next morning and I looked on my Facebook and I thought, who the fuck is Beryl Roberts? And why am I in a relationship with her? <laughs> Wedding photo of me, what the heck? We're awful for it, we're awful for it. Kathy's very similar to me in that way. So when she goes out and I can't, like, I can't drink, I still want her to have a good night. She doesn't get out much. She looks after me. I look after her. We take it in turns, right? When one of us can't drink. Or we both get shitted and end up on the news. But, <laughs> right, we, uh, we were on this night out and we're, we're in a pub, right, in Manchester, uh, a little boutique pub called Weatherspoons. And um, beautiful, really like, really lovely. And we're, and we're having a drink, uh, and this fella comes over to us in the pub called Ken. He's just got one tooth in the front of his head. Just like, oh. 
He looks like a tin opener. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> and because Kathy's hammered, she thinks he's hilarious. She's like, come on, Ken, join in. So he sat next to us, right? We're playing drinking games with Ken. And I'm like, just, well, I just want him to go. Do you know what? I don't know if you've ever been out with your mates and you're not drinking and they are. I don't know if you've ever played down at a latte. It's re it really hurts. <laughs> Gone for a nice drink. But we're playing drinking games in the pub, right? And um, Ken goes to me, right, Haley? <laughs> your turn. Like, Truth or dare? I, like, I don't know. I just want you to, just want you to leave. I went, truth, he went, right, you sat on a public toilet, you look to your left, there's a glory hole. A big cock comes through, what would you do? <laughs> and if, before I could answer, Kathy was so hammered, she just went, that'd be dead handy, that I could just pop my handbag over the top of it. Stop it getting covered in piss on the floor. It's, like, it's not a cloak room. <laughs> Popping a coat over. Come on, let's go on. So hammered. And she met one of her mates from work, right? So I could go home at that point, and they insisted on walking me to the taxi rank to make sure I was safe, right? You're talking to seagulls. I think I'll be all right. Where are you going after this? Um, and I'm in the taxi, and I'm telling the taxi driver where I'm going to, and she's still, the door's still open for the taxi, and she goes, make sure you send me a text when you get in, Ailey, because otherwise I'll be worried and I might have to ring the police. And I'm saying that just in case that taxi driver's thinking of murdering you. <laughs> okay. He wasn't. But... Right, we've all got to look after ourselves. We've all got to be safe. Even if he was going to murder me, right? That is not going to put him off, is it? <laughs> it's not going to be panicking going, oh my God, I was going to murder this one, but I didn't realise Columba was on to me. <laughs> no. Out go my plans. That lady who's drinking a Jager bomb out of a shiwi, she knows what I'm going to do. You've been so lovely, thank you. <laughs> if you take one message away from tonight's show, then I'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> it's been loads of jokes, hasn't it? Loads of jokes. I, uh, during lockdown, right, the, when the tip police was around the house, um, she's telling you basically, just be careful if you're having sex again, because you're at your most fertile once you've had a baby. So just be really careful that like, if you're going to use contraception so that you don't get pregnant again. You might want to, but a lot of women don't realise they're at the most fertile once they've had a child and get pregnant again straight away. And uh, I'm hormonal. I've just had a baby and I start freaking out, right? The boyfriend's trying to get close to me. I'm like, you can get away from me. <laughs> You're not coming anywhere near me until I can go in that doctor's and get a coil fitted. <laughs> and this was during lockdown, right? So he was like, well, when do you think that will be? And I went, I don't know. When Boris says it's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, just to give you a bit of context, my partner is an electrician, right? And th th these words come out of his mouth. He went, well, could you not order a coil off Amazon Prime? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fit it myself. I swear, I'll fit it myself. <laughs> That's what I said. You get a vasectomy off Facebook Marketplace, right? <laughs> so I don't know when Anyway, I've got to go. I've got to go and pat test me vagina. Uh, listen, thank you so much for coming. You've been so, so lovely. I'm so, so grateful. Uh, keep coming back to support the Rogan Bucket, and I hope you all have a lovely week. Goodbye. Thank you. Yeah.